Welcome back to Tijuana, Mexico. It's the WBC Super Bantamweight Championship. Eric Morales will defend the title against John Lowy. Bob Papa and Al Bernstein back in Tijuana, Mexico. Eric Morales at 21 years of age is undefeated. And Morales is one of the young bright stars in boxing. 27 and 0. Morales coming off a tremendous win. He has 21 knockouts after 118 amateur bouts. His father didn't even want him to become a pro boxer, but he excelled so well that now he is a world champion. Well, Eric Morales has the world championship. What an impressive effort against Zaragoza from landing, jabbing, power shots, everything. He did everything. He landed 49% of his punches, and equally as impressively, made Zaragoza land only 30% of his punches. That's something against uh, the 39-year-old Zaragoza, who has always been a very accurate puncher. Okay, what about making your first title defense in your hometown? How much pressure on his shoulders? You know, it's interesting. Different men react differently. Some people come out so fired up because of the feeling in the crowd that they actually get out of their game plan. I don't know that that would happen for Morales, but that young man, as you see coming in, has a whole different set of problems, doesn't he? Yeah, John Lowy, 25 and 1. Al, he's from Ireland. He has 18 knockouts, but does he really have the power? You know, the interesting thing is, with all those knockouts, and many of them coming early in fights, the quality of the competition that he's faced is nowhere close to what he's facing tonight. And that man, Eric Morales, get ready for a sonic boom when he gets into this room. Well, he has yet to appear to the crowd as he's about to come out of the runway to our left. John Lowy, the 31-year-old from Ireland, is in the ring. Lowy fighting out of Chicago. And Eric Morales, well, some fireworks are being set off. The WBC Super Bantamweight Champion, Eric Morales. If you're John Lowy, what is your game plan early? You better make sure that you don't get hit with something big. You better control the early rounds and use your jab against Morales. Well, Eric Morales and John Lowy are getting set for tonight's main event. The WBC Super Bantamway Championship is at stake. We set it up to our ring announcer, Danny Valdivia. Bob Aaron's top rank incorporated ESPN and Budweiser, the undisputed, undefeated king of beers, present the ESPN Championship Boxing main event of the evening. Super Bantamweights, 12 rounds for the Super Bantamweight Championship of the World. This championship bout has been sanctioned by La Comisión de Box y Lucha Libre de Tijuana, Ramón Espinosa, chairman, and the World Boxing Council, José Sulamán, president. Supervising at ringside and representing the WBC from Tijuana, Baja California, Mexico, Ramón Espinosa. From Mexico, Distrito Federal, Demetrio Vallado. Judging at ringside from Sacramento, California, Hank Ellis Puro. From Curaçao in the Netherlands, Antilles, Harold Lawrence. From La Paz, Baja California Sur, Guillermo Ayon, and our referee in charge from Dallas, Texas, Lawrence Cole. <laughs> in the red corner, the challenger wearing green and white trunks with a professional record of 25 wins, one loss, 18 wins by knockout at 119 and a half pounds from County Down, Ireland, fighting out of Chicago, Illinois, John, the quiet man, Lowy. And across the ring in the blue corner wearing black trunks, he's undefeated in 27 professional fights, 21 of his wins by knockout. He weighed in at 120 pounds 
From Tijuana, Baja California, Mexico, the WBC Super Bantamweight Champion of the World, Eric El Terrible Morales. We are getting set for tonight's championship bout as Eric Morales takes off the robe. Let's take a look at the rules as governed right, by the WBC. So, fight clean, play Olympia. No three knockdown rule, no standing eight count. You can only be saved by the bell in the final round. Only the referee may stop the bout. If there's an accidental foul, they'll go to the scorecards after four rounds. Prior to that, there's a technical draw. There's one glitch in the WBC rules. If there's an accidental foul, and there's a clash of heads. If you cause the clash of heads in the cut, you will have a point deducted. As Eric Morales says a prayer before he gets ready to make his first defense. And the referee is Lawrence Cole from Dallas, Texas. And he's sort of a Morales good luck charm. He was the referee when Morales beat Daniel Zaragoza in Texas in September. And wow! the ring and he takes it right to the champion and i'll tell you what that was perfectly legal and morales had barely turned around wow wow lowey <laughs> running a 4 2 40. the ring only 18 feet by 18 feet what did i say about lowey making sure he didn't get hurt in the first round how about the fact that he's going out to hurt the champion in the first round wow lowey has 10 knockouts in the first two rounds You see the knockout ratio, and it's a good one. Uh, great for Morales, good for Lowy also. Clearly, Lowy thinks of himself as a puncher, and I talked about the fact that many of his, his wins had to come against spectacular boxers, so was his power for real. But the point is, he definitely believes he's a uh, puncher, and if he believes he's a puncher, he's gonna act like one. Morales, who is 10 years younger than Lowy, has more rounds as a professional under his belt. 27 more pro rounds. One more time. Morales now settling down a little bit. Well, the quiet man came out and made a loud statement. John Lowe. Did he ever? And he continues to be aggressive. And Eric Morales has a look on his face like, wow, what happened here? Although I would caution everyone when they think of that look, Morales is a patient fighter. He's aggressive but patient, so he's not the kind of guy that belies a lot of emotion. But he's getting hit with left hooks, and I mean he's getting hit with some good left hooks by Lowe. Lowe now fighting out of the Chicago area from Ireland. He fought his first 13 fights, 11 of them in Ireland, two in England, and of his last 13, 11 of those have been fought in the Chicago area. Well, he wondered about Lowy having ring rust coming off a 187-day layoff. But there was one. But there's Morales with a good right hand. Well, after a blazing start by Lowy, Morales says it's my turn. But one thing you have to like about what John Lowy is doing, He's using the jab to set up these power punches, and then he is not afraid to throw those power punches. Final 15 seconds of this first round. It's been action-packed. Challenger John Lowy taking it right to the champion, Eric Morales. No matter what happens in this bout, a gutsy first round for John Lowy. And there's the bell to end round one. John Lowy in a hostile environment in Tijuana, yeah. taking it right to the champion, Eric Morales. Let's take a look at the opening bell. Now, you see Morales still deep in prayer. Lowy just waiting, can't wait. Now the bell sounds, and boom, he's over there and lands a left hook before you can say Daniel Zaragoza. Fortunately for Morales, Lowy did not land a really good clean shot. Morales was turning. 
We well, asked John Lowy fighting in this hostile environment of Tijuana, Mexico against Eric Morales, what his expectations were coming into the bout tonight. Oh, I, I am here to take the title back to Ireland. Uh, it's, I'm not going to be laid back. I'm going to go in and let him sh show him who's boss. Because I'm here to take the... Wayne McCulloch was unable to achieve this in January of this year. Well, hopefully John Lowe's going to do it in December. Eric Morales still lives at home with his parents. He has no responsibility. My responsibility is to my wife and my three kids who are still back in Ireland. And that's why I'm here determined to lift this belt and take it back to them. Very impressive. And John Lowy is a man of his word because he did come out in the first round to try and show Morales who was boss. Take a look at the numbers in round number one. Well, Morales may have ended up with more punches landed, but I, I gave Lowy the round uh, primarily because of the number he threw, and I thought he overall dictated the tempo of that round. Lowy referring to Wayne McCullough, another Irishman now fighting out of the Boston area who took on Daniel Zaragoza in January and lost. And by the way, should Morales win here tonight, there is much talk that McCullough would be his next opponent. So what if Lowy won? Would he fight McCullough? <laughs> that would be very intriguing. You think that you think that fight could make some money in Ireland? Possibly. By the time Eric Morales is through with the year, should he win tonight, he'll be talking with the Grove. <laughs> what about him needling Morales? Yeah, I thought that was fascinating, talking about Eric living at home and how uh, maybe the world's responsibilities haven't caught up with him yet. I love that, though. You know what? I love what John Lowe is doing. He's, he's doing everything he can to show that he's not intimidated. Even that move, which was a little illegal, but just kind of bullying Morales around. And also, anything to distract Morales from using his technique, and there's Morales looking up the combination. And you know, as I'm sitting here watching this, I'm thinking to myself, if you're going to beat Eric Morales, you know what? You're going to have to pressure him because he thrives on his own pressure. When he can come forward and push you back, it makes Eric Morales a 50% better fighter. But when he has to go back, he's not used to it. Chance of Eric. And because of that, the plot has thickened here early in this bout. Lowy has had a longer layoff than he had now. He was off from 1991 in December to 94 of March when he had a long layoff. That was, that was all part of his move from Ireland yes. to the United States. And getting himself situated here. Final 10 seconds of round number two. Eric Morales making the first defense of his WBC Super Bantamweight Championship in Tijuana against John Lowy on ESPN's Championship Boxing. Eric Morales springs out of his corner as we begin round number three. Bob Papa, Al Bernstein in Tijuana, Mexico. Morales making the first defense of his WBC Super Bantamweight Championship against John Lowy. And we take a look at numbers from round two. Morales again with a very slight edge. I again gave the round to Lowy primarily because you see he threw 13 more punches. And um, I thought generally dictated the tempo of that round a bit. But if, you see these rounds are close. If you just tuned in, Morales was in his corner in prayer at the start of round one. The bell sounded. And Lowy did a sprint across the ring and just attacked Morales. And that has set a tone in this bout. For those of you that have watched uh, boxing on ESPN many years, Terrence Ali used to do that. He sprinted across the ring at his opponents and uh, often would gain a big advantage early by doing it. There's one, as we take a look at Al Scorcar. I gave both the rounds to John Lowy. Now, mind you, that may not be the way the judges saw it because they were both very pretty close rounds, but I thought he dictated the tempo. There's one common opponent for these two boxers, Lee Fargo. 
Morales scored a second round knockout against Cargill in 1996. Lowy has two knockout wins against Cargill, one coming in 1990 and one in 1994. Lee is a journeyman who has fought just about everybody in the lower weight divisions. We've seen him here on ESPN. We saw him against Todd Foster. Not a bad fighter, but just not up to the caliber of these guys. Al, is Morales getting into his rhythm, or is he still a little off? He really isn't. He's having a hard time getting his punches in there. It's a nice counter right that may have hurt Lowe. The style of Lowe is so herky jerky, and he's been so aggressive. Oh, there's a clash of heads, and I that created a cut on the left eye of Morales. Now, point will be deducted. Accidental headbutt. Accidental headbutt. Accidental headbutt. So the rule right is Come here. one point will be deducted okay. from Lowy. Minus one. Minus one. This, this is the minus dumbest one. rule. It's the worst right. rule in minus boxing. The WBC right. should be ashamed of itself right. for having this rule, Turn and I don't know why they Box. do. And it's an organization that I have to say has made great strides in other areas of rules in the last few years and safety, etc. And no reason to have that rule. It's wrong. It was it was accidental. How do you even determine who who? Who caused it? Just because the cut turned up on Morales's eye, he could have caused the accidental clash. You never know. But that cut's in a bad spot. Now the bout must go four rounds for it to go to the judges' scorecards. If it is stopped between before the fourth round is completed, it will be a technical draw. And Morales will keep his title, but you're right. You get it's ruled accidental by a referee and then someone loses a point over it. Yeah, it makes no sense. Absolutely ludicrous. That's how Frankie Randall ended up losing the title match against Julio Cesar Chavez. It hurt him in that instance. And now, if you're John Lowe, you better go after Morales and try and win this round because you've already lost a point here. Final seconds of round number three. Eric Morales and John Lowe on ESPN's Championship Boxing. Miguel Diaz working on the right eyebrow of Eric Morales, a clash of heads in round number three. An accidental headbutt, but Lowy loses a point because it was Morales who was cut. And here's the fascinating point. Morales is the one that pushed his head in. That, that, see, this shows how absolutely ludicrous this rule is. Not that Morales is trying to, to butt him or cause that, but he's the one that pushed his head in. He got cut, and Lowy loses the point. That's it was an accidental foul. Accidental. How do you score the round out? I made a 10-8 for Morales because I thought he did win the round, landed more punches, and because he got the extra point, it's 10-8. And there you see how close this bout is. Lowy throwing more. And uh, Morales landing in a little better clip. I think doing a bit of an acting job there. Nice hook by Lowy. He's, yeah, he is doing an acting job because I don't think John Lowy is, is creating this. Now, that time, I believe Lowy's head was the lead in maybe the clash of heads, but now he's trying to draw something. You know what's fascinating about this spot? There you see my scoring. I had the first two rounds for Lowy. The interesting thing here is it's amazing how styles give people trouble. You just look at this spot now and you see it. This is not the right style for Eric Morales to shine with. It just turns out that way. And you wouldn't even know it until you saw him in the ring, even if you'd seen tapes of low. It just has turned out that way. Approaching the midway point of round four. Remember now, every time Morales throws a punch, whether it lands or not, this crowd rules. There is the jab by Lowe. Now, Eric is not going to get his jab in. There's a nice right hand to the body in the head. Morales shaking his head, thinking that Lowe is again using his head to hit the cut. I, I, I grant you that they've had some heads clashing, but I don't feel like Lowe is doing it intentionally. There's Morales using the jab. Eric Morales has a very nice jab and really should be using that punch a little bit more. The one-two by Lowen. Morales having 
himself a very nice round four here. And getting this crowd into it finally. Eric Morales gets a rise out of the crowd. 30 seconds to go in round four. Best sustained action from the champion. Crowd trying to urge Morales on. Final seconds of round four. Back with round five after this timeout on ESPN. his WBC Super Bantamweight Championship. Bob Papa along with Al Bernstein. Round five underway between Eric Morales and John Lowe. Punches in round four. You see Morales starting to build a little gap here, but still Lowe being pretty aggressive. Let's give a word of praise to Miguel Diaz, who's working cuts for Morales, and he's done a great job on enclosing that cut over the left eye. And with that cut on the accidental butt, that occurred in round three. Good left hand by the round. Eric has found a home for the counter left hook as Lowy comes in. Lowy's still trying to land the right after he throws the jab. You mentioned Morales' nickname, El uh, Terrible. And you talked earlier about his dad kind of discouraging him from boxing. He got the nickname because his dad threw him in against the toughest opponents that you could be in in Tijuana to try and discourage him from boxing. But he ran through all those guys. Everyone was shocked, and they called him El Tibra, El Tibra. And both his father, who's in his corner, Jose, and his mother did not really want him to box. And they figured, well, We'll get an early KO on his career and he'll become a doctor or a lawyer. They wanted him to get an education, but he was so good in Tijuana that now he's a world champion. And the heads come together again. And another accident for Bat. This is on the right eye ground. Oh, wow. John Lowe is shaking his head saying, hey, not just me. Double point. They, you see, they Yeah, we're not blaming Lawrence Cole. And here, here they come. Now, but see that the interesting thing is that actually came on the other side. And for John Lowy, it's got to be frustrating. He may be using his head a little, but I, I don't see where he's deliberately trying to butt. He's he's explaining it to us. He's over us here trying to explain it to us. Now there, that's totally accidental. You can't tell me he did that on purpose. It's just that Morales is the one that's getting cut from it. So now yet another point deducted from John Lowy's total. Now remember, if this bout is stopped, we have completed four rounds. We are in the fifth round. At any point if this bout is stopped due to these cuts, these accidental fouls, they will go to the judge's scorecard. And here comes Morales. This is hard. I'll be anxious to see the replay on that one. Of course, Lawrence Cole doesn't have the benefit of the replay, but then he made a pretty quick decision there. And I think at this juncture, with two points taken away in this round, if I'm Lowy, I better stay on the outside for a while, and that's what he's doing. Nice hook landed by Lowy, though, after Morales landed a good punch. Well, Lowy knew coming into <laughs> Eric Morales' hometown that it would not be easy. And that, and that is proving to be the case, both in and out of the ring. Final seconds of round five. There is Morales, and he had Lowy all tied up. Lowy moving his head from side to side, and he was cautioned. He was given a, a point deduction by Lawrence Cole. I'm going to tell you, I got to go along with Lowy. He was moving his head from side to side. He was not moving it forward. But Morales, by 
moving backwards and holding on to Lowe really created that point deduction. I'm not saying John Lowe's been a saint in this, Bob, but that was the wrong move. Punches in round five in what became a 10-7 round for Morales with Lowey losing two points. And really, let's face it, there are two cups that Morales has, one on each eye, and you can make the case that both cuts were caused by Morales leading in just as much as Lowey with his head. They were accidental clashes of heads, and they were called that. But then, because Morales has been doing so much politicking with uh, Lawrence Cole, the, the point was deducted. Now scorecard. Well, Morales, yeah, Morales coming now, moving out to a very big lead here. Because of those points being deducted. And he has started to take control of the bout from a boxing standpoint, though it has not been pretty. Right, because you and I have given Morales each of the last three rounds. Points or no points to go. We'll see how John Lowe deals with the adversity and Eric Morales. Morales with some blood on each eyelid. We talked about his dad was days in his corner. He was a very good uh, boxer in the 70s. Good friends with the legendary Ruben Oliveras. He, and they had a little resemblance to him, so they called him Oliveritos, was his nickname as a boxer. Lowy doing some politicking of his own with Lawrence Cole. Look, look at Lowy. Now, every time he gets in a, in a break, he puts his hands way to his side, which is dangerous because you can get whacked that way. He doesn't want another point being deducted. What's disturbing about what has gone on here, and I'm not saying John Lowy would be doing better in this fight. They're going to take a look at the cuts. Is the fact that they've taken away the aggressiveness of Lowy. Now, if this fight was stopped right now, they would go to the scorecards. And I would think it would be a landslide for Morales. With all the points being deducted, yes. And I don't think they'd have to go to the electoral college to find out either. And the doctor lets the fight continue, as you would expect. in the corner at the end of the round. Both men landing big shots. A little holding and hitting by Lowy. But uh, it was a great sequence of action. Round number seven in the weather, but no knockdowns. Now, see, Morales just pulled Lowy into him, and then he cautioned Lowy for using his head. Eric Morales is a 21-year-old champion who's a terrific boxer, but as an official, he's not that good. There are the numbers through six rounds. And you see Morales building up an edge, and now even throwing more punches than Lowy, so he has started to take control of the bout. So, oh, there's an elbow by Lowy. He figured, well, I'm getting criticized for the other stuff, but I'll get something in here. And I'm not suggesting John Lowy is a, uh, a schoolboy in here. He's a rough customer, but I still think he's gotten a little bit of a raw deal with his point deductions. Shitting someone in his corner in between rounds. Get Lawrence Cole, the referee's attention, say, hey, look, Morales is pulling my man into him. As Morales scores with a good shot inside. A pretty good round for Eric Morales. 95 seconds remaining in the round. As far as late power is concerned, Morales has a little bit more than Lowy. Lowy has a seventh and eighth round knockout in his career, a combination for Morales. Morales has an eighth round knockout, a tenth round knockout, and two of the eleven. Fans 
come to their feet. A lot of holding by Lowy. They're chanting duro in Spanish. That means hard. You cannot push. Now Lowy is getting cautioned for a push. Is it just about nothing that John Lowy hasn't been warned about in this fight? Hey, he might get accused of the Kennedy assassination before this is over. And what about Watergate? I think I saw him hovering around that hotel too. Thirty seconds to go in round seven. That is not to take anything away from what Morales has done over the last four now five rounds. Now, what he has done is settle down after a very difficult and rocky beginning. And let's face it, those cuts are bothersome. Whether, whatever way we think they happen, they certainly are pleasant for Eric Morales. And you mentioned the pressure of fighting his first defense against all these hometown fans. He wants to look perfect. This is not the kind of fight you really want to Another lecture from Lawrence Cole about something. How about hitting after the bell? Morales back to his corner. They said that Lawrence Cole was his good luck show. And there is John Lowe as we listen in in his corner. championship a successful one. Well, apparently, they believe John Lowy's right hand is broken, and that is the reason why they, he did not come out for this round, so all of the rest aside, no question, Eric Morales was winning this bout, deserved to win, and this crowd delights with him in his first title defense. Eric Morales goes to 28-0, his 22nd stoppage. As he stops, John Lowy, who cannot answer the bell for round number eight with what is apparently a bad hand. Hopefully we'll hear from someone in the Lowy camp and the Morales camp as well. It's a tough one for Eric Morales. John Lowy certainly came to win. He really did. He made a, a, a good effort. Clearly Eric Morales a little more powerful. I think more skilled fighter. But John Lowy did land some big power shots, and I thought got some things done in this match. He really made problems for Morales, and, and this young man, John Lowy, with a, a hurt right hand, apparently. Oh, you see him wincing as they try and take the glove off. So clearly something was wrong, but uh, he gave a good account of himself and ran afoul of the officiating a little bit tonight. But uh, in general, gave a good effort. Well, they, they didn't even take that glove off. You can tell he was wincing before. He faced better competition other than the Kennedy McKinney fight than he has been in Eric Morales. And for Eric, those cuts will be a bother for him for future fights, too. They're talking about maybe a February date against Wayne McCullough, and uh, they'll have to see how well those cuts heal up. Hey, credit Miguel Diaz for doing a terrific job of stopping the flow of blood throughout the course of the fight. Our ring announcer is standing by, Danny Valdivia. He has the official time. The referee stops the contest because of a broken right hand on John Lowy. The winner by a technical knockout in the eighth round, Eric El Terrible Morales. Eric Terrible El Vencedor por knockout técnico en el octavo asalto. Eric El Terrible Morales. Eric Morales and John Lowy. John, a game effort. What exactly got injured in your right hand? 
Well, it's a, in my last fight in June in Chicago, I damaged my, my little, my pinky. Oh. And in the fifth round here, I caught Morales in the top of the head. I came back to the corner and I didn't let the corner know, which was stupid on my behalf. I should have told the corner in the fifth round that I hurt my hand. But it was after the sixth round, I let the corner know. They put me out for one more and they seen that I just wasn't able to throw it. And with the good advice of my corner, they, they stopped before I got injured. Were you ever hurt badly in the fight by Morales? No, I, w I wasn't hurt. I now, now the, you had lots of points deducted. I know that the two clashes of heads, which they ruled accidental, but the WBC rule says they have to take a point away from the guy who's not cut. But the one I know you did vigorously oppose when he took a point away from you when you thought you were just bobbing and weaving. Well, that is my tactic. Against a taller guy, you have to dodge and weave to try and get inside. But people can see that Morales is a taller fighter. He comes in with the head very low, but the smaller guy always seems to get the, the point deducted from them, which I'm very disappointed in. You gave a good effort here tonight. Do you think you put yourself in the landscape of continued title contention? Well, I hope so. That I, I would love a rematch with Morales. I think I was getting to him. My, 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 cor my corner, see, I, I took the advice of my corner, which was right. I could have went on. I could, I sh I could have kept it away from my corner and told him that I was okay, but you have to let your corner know what the situation is in the fight. I caught him with a good right hand in the fifth round. I didn't let the corner know at the end of that round. It wasn't until the sixth round where I started to feel the pain. And then the advice of my corner in the seventh round was to, to pull me out. Now, by the way, they said they wanted the rematch in Chicago on St. Patty's Day. I don't know that Eric Morales is going to go for that. But you ran out in the first round there and you caught him. Was that by design? You thought you could catch him early? Yes. Again, when I was asked before this fight that I know anything about Morales, I noticed in all his contests, he stays in the corner until the bell goes, then he turns, which was silly in his behalf. In professional boxing, when the bell goes, the fight starts. And I know that once the bell starts, I'm in my right mind to hit him. Right. Hey, congratulations on a good effort, John. We'll... No, it's okay. I hope your hand heals for you. All right. Let's get Eric Morales in here, who defends his championship against the very game John Lowy, and uh, had some badges of honor, if you will, from it, the two cuts. Uh, Eric, can we get Eric? We're getting Eric, folks, I promise you. Eric Morales, who defended his title, his first title defense. They are still working on the cuts. Miguel Diaz, who, did, by the way, did a terrific job on those cuts, will serve as our interpreter. Miguel, ask him how much of a distraction it was having those cuts early in the fight. ¿Cuánto fue de distracción al haber tenido esos cortes en tus ojos? ¿Cuál fue tu distracción? Pues, ¿Fue mucha? No, de ninguna manera. Yo creo que los cortes de mi, de mi cabeza hacían que o presionara más o me retirara de su cabeza. Decidí presionar un poco y me lastimó otra vez. Uh, the cuts made him a little, uh, made him more pressure. He wants to put more pressure because the cat really made him upset. And then when he get more pressure, he can cut in the other eye. This, uh, this is a question for you. You had to deal with those cuts. Those were probably very difficult cuts to, to stop. Were you concerned you wouldn't be able to stop the bleeding? No, 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 no. It was under control all the time. No problem. No problem. Ask him about the pressure of fighting in front of his home crowd. What, did that affect him in any way? Pelear aquí en frente a tu público en Tijuana te afecta algo la presión del público la presión de estar peleando en casa. No, al contrario me, me alienta más. Yo creo que la gente de Tijuana es muy muy bonita. Yo creo que está, es lo mejor que he tenido en, en, dentro de, de, de mi persona que me rodea. No, no, the other way around. The people really uh, motivate me and I really love the people and the people really make good for me. All right, tell him congratulations, great effort, Eric Morales. All right, Eric Morales gets the job done, defends his title the very first time out in front of these adoring fans.